Who can call Jesus Savior this morning? Are you happy to be saved? Come on, can we let him know? Come on, can we let him know? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome to Harbor of Hope this morning. Y'all are looking just as pretty as ever. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, they're looking just as pretty as ever. Come on. Amen. We'd like to welcome our online family. We love you. Those listening from the parking lot, you're looking just as pretty as ever. Amen. Can we give them a hand? Let them know we love them and miss them. God bless you all. Um, can, do we have that first slide up there? I, I just want to say uh, thank you to all of our packing party participants. Amen. We had a time packing. Yeah. Amen. We had a time packing those backpacks uh, full of school supplies, so this was the team that joined us, so uh, we're just so thankful for those of you that got to come out and help us with that, and uh, don't, don't worry, you'll get your chance to help with things, that's what we're going to talk about today with those bulletins you got, amen? Yeah, okay, I see where I'm at today, okay, I see I'm on an uphill battle, that's all right, that's all right. Uh, talking about the backpacks, so they're actually all packed out here in the, uh, the coat rack room. You've, you've probably seen them when you came in. So next Sunday, uh, we want to bless the Harbor of Hope family, our, our, our family. So if you can take advantage of this and you got your kids, make sure they're with you next week. And please, please get you a backpack or, or however many kids you got. That way you can, you know, you can use this. Uh, we just want to bless as many families as possible. So next Sunday, make sure your kids are with you. And uh, please, please get you a backpack uh, for your children next, next week. Amen? Also, do not forget about our missions project. Uh, it makes sense to put your sense in missions. And I want to thank everybody that's already doing that. Uh, this morning we got to put a bunch of those coins in those big jars, so uh, thank you so much. We're excited about that. I think we're possibly going to have that for the next month, I think for a whole other month. We're going to leave that, those jars out there, uh, so we, I'm, I'm just expecting to fill them things all the way up, so uh, thank you all again for what you're doing uh, to help support missions. Also, August the 29th, that is the date we've set for our, our fresh new season to begin. Uh, where we'll have our 10 o'clock service and uh, we come together as a family. And today's message, again, we're gear, gearing up for that big uh, day and that new fresh season of ministry. So today's message, again, is going to be geared towards that and how you're going to be able to help. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, have you thought about it? Come on, just, just tell them. Have you thought about it? Where are you going to help? Come on. Let's just go ahead and get uncomfortable first thing, right? Amen. But uh, you'll, you'll see today as we talk about the ministry of helps today in the message, uh, and that's what it is. What would a church be without help, right? right. Without the ministry of help. So uh, let's all stand. Let's, let's get our hearts prepared to worship. Uh, let's, let's just seek the Lord's face right now and tell him how much we love and appreciate him. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you again for salvation. Thank you again for the body of Christ and allowing us to be able to come and, and host your presence again today. Lord, it's an honor. And we magnify you and you only. And Lord, that is our heart's desire today is that you would get all the glory. This is your church. Lord, I've been quoting what you said to Peter upon this rock. I will build my church. It's your church, Lord. We are yours. We are your people. So, Lord, be glorified today in everything that we do. Be glorified today in everything that we say. Every, every thought that comes to our mind, Lord, may it be to your glory. Every conversation, Lord, we just want you to get all the glory. Today, Lord God, you know every heart. You know every need that's present here. Lord, I, I, I believe, Lord, I want to see you get glory from, from answered prayer and, and the meeting of needs today, Lord God. I just want you to get all the glory, Lord. So just touch your people today, Lord Jesus. Minister to their hearts. Minister to their needs. And Lord, when we leave this place today, may there be such a glow about us just because of your glory that was here, Lord. <laughs> We just want to see your glory today. Have your way. 
Lord, we love you. We praise you. Take control, Holy Spirit. Take control. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 We're going to ask you to remain standing. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Amen. Can we give him praise this morning? <laughs> praise you, the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts and praise him according to his excellent greatness. Psalms 150. Then it goes on to tell us how we can praise him on the stringed instruments and all the instruments. And then it goes, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, give him praise one more time, can we, as we enter his courts with praise. We give you all the praise. Oh, one of the forms we can praise him is we can clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Amen, because we're victorious through him. Come on, let's put those hands together. Let's put our instruments together. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Let's sing it together. Sing it. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Your voices and sing it with us. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, you know what? Now we're gonna step it up and sing it again. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. He's worthy. Hasn't he been faithful? Amen. He promised to never leave us, never forsake us. Everything we need, we find in him. Come on, let's sing it. He's our healer, our deliverer. God, my Savior. God, Hallelujah. He is so good to us. 
He is so good to us. Every praise he is worthy for. Hallelujah. Take just a moment. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We call you holy. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we give you all the praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take just a moment. Tell him how much you love him. Give him praise. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I call you holy. Lord, you are holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Lord, you are holy. Holy you are. Holy. sing it together and I call you holy Lord you are holy you are so holy to me I call you holy Lord you are holy holy you are holy you be yes you are yes you are yes you are I call you awesome I call you awesome, Lord, you are awesome, you are so awesome to me. I call you awesome, Lord, you are awesome, awesome you are, awesome you'll be. And I call you Lord, you are healer, you are the healer to me. I call you healer, Lord, you are healer, healer you are, and healer you'll be. Oh, yes, you are, and I call you Jira, Lord, my provider. You are provider to me. I call you Jira, Lord, my provider. Provider you are, and provider you'll be. And I call you all that, Lord, you are all that. You have been all that to me. I call you all that, Lord, you are all that, all that you are, and all that you'll be. Yes, Lord, I call you holy, Lord, you are holy, you are so holy to me, and I call you holy. Lord, you are holy, holy you are, and holy you'll be. Can we sing that again? Sing it again. He's holy. Yeah, I call you holy. Lord, you are holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Lord, you are holy. Holy. Oh, yes. Holy you are, and holy you'll be. You're so holy. You're so holy. Yes. Holy you are, and holy you'll be. Amen. He's holy. He's awesome. He's awesome. Tell him how awesome he is. Lord, we give you praise. You're so awesome. Hallelujah. You're Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You're our healer. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. 
Keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, He heals me when I'm broken, strength when I am weak, and forever He will reign. My God is awesome, He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, He heals me when I'm broken, strength when I've been My God is awesome. 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 My God is awesome. Oh, He's awesome. Awesome. Yes, He's awesome. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven, His grace is what I'm living, praise His holy name. My God is awesome, oh He's awesome, awesome. do you believe that He's awesome? awesome. He's all that. He's all that. He's all that. He's mighty. He's our deliverer. He's holy. He's our provider. Amen. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, my victory. Hallelujah. Jehovah Megadish, my sanctifier. Hallelujah. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord is righteous. 
Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. He's all that. He's awesome. Can you give him a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's all that. He's all that. He's Elohim, the creator. Jehovah, the Lord God. El Shaddai, the source. Adonai, our master. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. We could go on and on and on what he is today. Let faith arise in this place today and know that he's everything. He is the great I am. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise. That's why we can't help but praise him. Hallelujah. He's all that. He's all that. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. That's what he's saying, I am. I am. The great I am is what he's saying. What do you mean today? He said, trust me. Hallelujah. I am the Lord, I'm the Almighty God. I am the one for nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd and I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. I am. I am. I am the realm in the bush for Abraham And I am this ultimate sacrifice for sin I am your redeemer, the beginning and the end I am That's who he is I am That's what he's saying to you, I am I am I am Messiah, David's offspring. I am your high priest, and I am the Christ. I am the resurrection. Woo! I am the life. I am. Yes, I am. Pass behind. I am the one in the midst of two or three. I am and your tabernacle. I am the jubilee. Comfort and relief from your stress. I am the 
more. Let's stand to our feet and give him a hand clap. Let's do it. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is here with us. Where two or three are gathered. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, just worship him, saints. Hallelujah. Oh, you're all that, Lord. All that. For oh, you alone are worthy. You alone are holy. Only you alone deserve my praise. So I come before you just to honor and adore you you alone are worthy of my prayer only you alone let's sing it you alone are holy you alone I'll give, give him sing unto the Lord as long as I live. That's the psalmist. David, can you give him a hand clap for oh, praise? Give as him long praise, as we live. Give him praise. We'll give, give him, him praise. praise. Give him praise. I just want to say thank you for your heart of worship. It's, it's, it's refreshing to be able to come in here and just start worshiping the Lord and knowing that everybody else is joining and, and just the focus is on him. The focus is on Jesus. Isn't that awesome? And then it's awesome to go through another week with God's faithfulness and to be able to carry His faithfulness in here and worship Him for who He is. It's all about Him, amen? We can drop all the, the legalistic type stuff, come on, amen. and just make it all about Jesus. Is that okay to do in church? Amen. You daggone right it is. Come on. Because it's all about Jesus. And it starts being about what we got on and stuff like that. We've missed it, church. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your heart. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Got your Bibles? 
We're going to go to two portions of Scripture today. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to go to Acts chapter 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Acts chapter 27. I love hearing those pages turn. While you're turning your page, who's got your Bible? Say amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Acts chapter 27. So today we're going to be talking about the ministry of helps and we're going to explain the bulletin that, that you got today. Because we got all uncomfortable last week about talking about serving and helping and, and just, you know, you've done got your neighbor all uncomfortable this morning asking what they're going to help in. Come on, ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord? I love it. I love it. But today we're going we're gonna to see why it's so, so needed to have ministry of help. Verse 28, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Notice all the gifts that are mentioned in this one verse. It says, And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, I mean, all these powerful giftings, leadership, right? Teachers, apostles, prophets, miracles, healings. And then there's this one word called helps that's just as needed as all these power-packed gifts. Where would the church be without helps? The ministry of helps. Let's go over here to, to Acts. Chapter 27. One verse. Verse 17. It says, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, struck sail, and so were driven. Lord Jesus, thank you for the body of Christ. And thank you, Lord God, for what you are in the process of doing in all of our hearts. You're causing us to grow. You're challenging us. You're causing us to step out of our comfort zones. You're causing us to be a healthy body, a growing body. So Lord, may your will be done. Holy Spirit, you are the one that has placed gifts and talents in all of our lives to be manifest for the work of the kingdom, for the profit of with all, the whole body. So start the stirring process right now, Holy Spirit. Just start stirring, stir, stir, stir. And Lord, may you receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Look about three people and just say good morning and smile real big. Give our praise team musicians a big hand. I can't say enough how much I appreciate their heart to just lead us into the presence of the Lord every Sunday. I uh, don't ever want to take that for granted. Amen. Um, so last week, so just to rehearse what we were talking about last week, we were talking about, you know, Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. Therefore, just like we want a healthy body, I think Jesus, he wants a healthy body too, right? He wants a healthy, growing church. And that's what the body of Christ is. We are the church, right? So he wants a healthy body. And last week we talked about all the means, the ways that God has, has made it so that we can grow, so that we can be healthy. Uh, last week we talked about how he has given us a measure of faith. And, and you know, faith is like that muscle. You've got to exercise it to cause it to grow, right? And, and we talked about how God's given us his spirit to help us grow and we, we, we read some of the same verses we're going to read today about how there's different ministries, there's different activities within the body, different giftings, different talents, but it is all the same spirit that's driving it all, amen, working in and through each of us uh, as he wills. Um, 
we, we talked about how he's given us his word to help us to grow. And we, we like bread of life. And, and you know, if you eat a bunch of junk food, it's going to make you unhealthy. It's the same thing with the world. If you're taking in all the junk of this world, you will be unhealthy. But if you're taking, partaking of the bread of life, the word of God, you're going to be growing and you're going to be healthy. And then we talked about how he has given us the church. He's given us the church, a community of relationships. A community of relationships where we can learn how to love, where we can learn how to forgive, where we learn how to be faithful, how we learn how to be loyal, how we learn kindness, how we learn how to serve. We can't learn those things apart from relationships. And God's made the church to be a place of relationships, community. Amen? But we also looked at how the church is a place when we come together as the body of Christ in this setting, this is a setting where we can grow. Because this is a setting where there's ministries that need help. And you can get out of comfort zone, right? And you can serve in ministries and maybe do things that you never thought you would be doing, you know. And you, you, you can grow in faith here in this setting. This is a setting where the Spirit of the Lord wants to flow through you and the giftings and the talents and, and the things that He has birthed in your heart. You can do that in this setting where the body of Christ comes together. This is a place where you can grow in the Word. Because we're going to be preaching from the Word. We're going to open up the Word of God and we're going to teach and preach from the Word. This is a place where you grow. All right? Amen. So with that, we, 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 we were talking about, are you going to let anything hinder your growth? Okay? And that's really the question we've got to ask. With all the ways that God wants us to grow and the means by which He's given us to grow, are you going to allow anything to hinder your growth? Are you going to allow fear to hinder you from growing? So I think that's one of those things, you know, fear. Remember the boat analogy? Peter's the one that exercised faith and got out of the boat. We're all comfortable in our padded pews, but are we going to let fear stop us from stepping out and trying something new for the Lord and serving in some area of the church? Come on. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, that's some truth right there. Come on. Fear will keep people in the seat. Right? I know I can sing, but I just, oh, now you're making excuses. Are you going to let excuses, come on, hinder you from growing? Comfort, excuses, fear, they all work hand in hand to do what? To hinder growth within the body of Christ. Today, I want us to just start with 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to read a few of these verses because I want you to see you know, straight from God's Word, some of the giftings of the Spirit, uh, that the Spirit of the Lord works inside of the body of Christ. So if you want to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I want us to read here, as we, as we come to that one verse that we read earlier, which was so fascinating to me because I think it's an overlooked word and it's an overlooked ministry, the ministry of helps. Well, let's start in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and it says... Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who, which worketh all in all. Verse 7 says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So in other words, the Holy Spirit has given every member of the body of Christ a gift. And what is that gift for? To profit everybody, to help each other grow, okay? It's all for God's glory and the edification of the church. When it becomes a gift and you're owning it and it's for your glory to stand out so others can see you, you're wrong. Amen? God gives the church the ability to, to have these gifts through the Spirit, these giftings that come flow, flow through us by the Spirit, but they're not for us. It's for the church to edify the body of Christ and for God's glory, okay? Now, all these different ministries, giftings, manifestation, but, but it's the same Spirit. Now, listen to what it says in verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. There's some people that just give good advice, good words of wisdom, Right? Uh, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. There are some people that just, you know, you can go to when you have a question about something. Come on. Because they have this gift of wisdom. They have this gift of knowledge. It's a spiritual gift. 
It says to another, verse 9, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, differing kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11, but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The spirit gives each member of the body of Christ gift, a gift, gifts, all right, giftings, right? And, and, and the spirit is in control of this, but I think a lot of times we allow fear or excuses or, or comfort to hinder us, hinder the spirit from working through us. And, and, and we can't do that because we, we need to be growing in a healthy, growing body. It says here, that's when Paul gives this analogy, and, and I love this because this is, he is talking to a bunch of Gentiles in the Corinth church, by the way, showing us that because of Christ and our relationship with Jesus, the whole body, right, Jews, Gentiles, we've been brought together as one, amen, <laughs> and the Spirit of God is for us all to, to manifest giftings through us all. So don't you think, well, that doesn't apply to me. No, you're part of the body of Christ through Christ. Hey, it applies to you. We all can take this home and pray over it and, and believe for the Lord to, to through His Spirit, give, give us gifts that would edify the body of Christ and glorify the Lord. And it, he gives the analogy of the body. Verse 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So he, he gives us an analogy. We all have a body that's got many parts, and he says it's the same way with the body of Christ. There's many different functions, ministries, giftings, but we're all a part of the one body. We're all needed. Amen? So we have all these, these giftings. And that's when we, we go to verse 27. It says, and ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And again, he starts talking about these gifts. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, the gifts of healings, helps. That's the way I look at helps there, because then you've got governments, which is ministry like leadership abilities, diversity of tongues, right? What an amazing gift to be able to talk some other language that you don't even know to tell somebody about Jesus. Healing, miracle, apostles, prophets, teachers, and helps. No, 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 no. Apostles, prophets, teachers, right? Leadership abilities, healings, miracles, helps. Because where would the body of Christ be without helps? Without people that come alongside and help. Now that's, that's where we're going because there's a beautiful picture now in Acts 27. The definition of this helps in 1 Corinthians 12 is to aid or to render assistance. We know that, right? To aid, to render assistance. But now we go to Acts 27. Now note, this is different Greek words, okay? But there's the same type of definition. But in Acts 27, it gives us a beautiful picture of what this help looks like, okay? Acts 27 is a chapter that is talking about Paul on his journey to Rome. He's a prisoner. He is, he is going to go, go before Caesar. And this is his journey from going boat to boat, trying to sail to Rome. And it's a bad time to be sailing because it's around the winter time. And, and they have hit a storm that you would say sort of like a typhoon or a hurricane. And now they're worried about the boat falling apart. And there in Acts chapter 27, look what it says. It says, which when they had taken up, verse 17, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. Helps. Now, if you are 
are, are, are a skipper in here, and you're, you know the nautical terms, right? These, you know that this, this helps is referring to frapping a vessel. And this is when they would take cords, and they would take ropes and chains, and they would put them around the hull of the ship because the way the ship was designed, you know, you've got boards that are connected to each other and these crazy storms, they would wrap these cords around the hull of the ship to keep it strong and tight so that those storms would not break the ship apart and cause them to sink. They used helps. And I love this picture now because, yes, it is a different Greek word, but yet to aid. And I think about this vessel, this ship that Paul was on, and that other people were on. It had a course it was on. It had purpose. It was on a path. They were on a journey. And then there was a, a danger, so they had to get these cords and cables to wrap around the hull of the ship to help it stay strong and stable so that it could continue on its journey. That is the picture of the body of Christ. We're going somewhere. We ain't sleeping. We ain't supposed to be anyhow. Come on. We surely ain't dead. Come on, amen. We're alive in Christ and we've been given purpose. We're supposed to be going on a journey, going forward, making disciples. We're made up of a bunch of members and ministries. Come on. And so whatever we can do, we all need help and re to render assistance, to aid, to render assistance. That's what the ministry of helps is all about. When I think about it now in, in, in terms of, of 1 Corinthians 12, I'm like, wow, this is a beautiful picture. He mentions help, helps among all these other powerful giftings because helps, the ministry of rendering assistance to grow and be what you're called to be is so important. So that is what the ministry of helps is all about. It is when the people within the body of Christ come together and use their time. They, they give their time, they give their talents to come alongside, to aid, to render assistance to the other members of the body of Christ and the ministries within the body of Christ so that not only the individual grows, but we help each other grow. Amen? Amen. If everybody stayed in the pews, what's that mean? We've hindered our growth. But when we, everybody jumps on board and starts helping and rendering assistance where needed, that's when this help starts taking place. It's beautiful. And we start going forward and we start growing because then you're going to build relationships and you're going to grow in faith, you're going to grow in love, right? When you start serving within the body of Christ. It's beautiful how God set this thing up. But this ministry of helps is so vital to the growth of the church. Now, you have been given bulletins. On the back, you have what? What we're, we're focused on, you know, just getting geared up for the, the new fresh season that we're entering into in, in August, August the 29th. We come together for the 10 o'clock service and we're starting this new season. So on the back of your bulletins today is we have these areas of ministry that we re really want to get help with. Here we are again, to aid, to render assistance. So now let me explain this. So... The whole month of August, you have an opportunity to ponder about this and pray about where it is that you could serve, okay? Um, what, what ministry you can serve in. Um, how, how does the Lord want, want you to be used? But here's the beautiful thing about the ministry of helps. Maybe you don't know any other giftings within you, you that the Holy Spirit's birthed in you. Maybe you don't know the rest of the, the story, but you're praying about it. You know what? You can step into the ministry of helps while you're waiting to see what else the Lord's wanting to do in your life. Ain't that cool? And you can not only help in one area, you can help in multiple areas while you're waiting on the Lord to do whatever that special gifting is inside. Ain't that awesome about the ministry of helps? Ain't that cool? I mean, <laughs> now remember there's some things that you just might not can do, like who can sing, right? Who can't?
can't sing. Now, those who can't sing, you might not want to help with the musical part, right, and the, the vocal part. If you just know that and you've been told that, oh, shame on the people that spoke that into your life. But, you know, when you see this look, when, when you sing, you know, you know what I'm saying. But there's other places, man, you can jump in and help, right? <laughs> right? I don't want to lose you. <laughs> I feel like every time I take a pause, I'm losing you. <laughs> so we got the whole month of August to, to think about this, to pray about this. Uh, can you volunteer for six months? Six months. August, February be two critical months to where we recruit and recommit help, ministry of helps. Can you, can you, can you devote six months? You know, there, there is a, a, a thought in the church that if I sign up to help somewhere, it's a life sentence. <laughs> and I'm in it until, <laughs> until something bad happens, right? No, can you, can you sign up for six months? Now, now, get this, the more people that sign up, guess what? You ain't, you ain't serving the whole time, right? If you got 50 people that want to be greeters, not everybody is going to be serving on one Sunday. So you're going to have a schedule where you might, not, you might not greet but one time a Sunday, a month, I mean. You know what I'm saying? The more, the more people, see how it's beautiful it is when it all comes together. The more people in the church that jump in the ministry of helps, the easier it is on everybody. I heard one person, whenever I say, amen, oh, wow, this is just falling on deaf ears, wow, no, February, August, months to sign up, commit or recommit, what I want to do the rest of this service is talk about those four ministries on the back of those bulletins, because I think, you know, before you get into doing what you feel led to do, maybe you should know a little bit about it, amen, amen. I'll amen myself. <laughs> Craig, you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Uh, appreciate that, Craig. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> just picking, just picking. You know, I would never do that. But this is so important. I hope you're getting it. And if you have any questions, please holler at me later, okay? Because this is so important. I just, the ministry of helps. We help each other grow. How do you learn to love without somebody to love and learn all that, right? We, we help each other grow. Let's look at the greeters first. So in the future, as we go to this new, fresh new season, um, I foresee, you know, service don't start till 10, so I foresee the group of greeters that are on duty for that day coming around 20 minutes early because you got to get focused on, on getting your bulletins and getting, getting things ready, you know. But I would like to see that team pray as well as every volunteer team. Every, everybody as a part of the Ministry of Helps team pray before... Uh, service because you know what you never know who could walk through the doors as we gather as the body of Christ to worship Jesus who might just be on their last last leg come on and you're the first ones that's going to be seeing people and seeing people's faces as they walk through the doors right and you, you're, you're the one that's there to greet them to give them that smile it, and and so you meet about 20 minutes early you get everything set up you pray and then and then you get ready to give that the people, you know, directions maybe, you know, some if, if anybody has any questions about children's ministry or anything, so you'd be ready to do that. And then guess what? Once, once service gets ready to start, you're done. That's what I mean. You could be a greeter and you could also do other things, right? Amen? Now, now again, some of you were made to be greeters, but some of you, I don't know, right? Back to the hee-haw, gloom, despair, and agony on me, right? Some Christians, I think that's their theme song. Probably shouldn't be a greeter, right? That's not the first sign, right, person that you want to meet when you walk into a church, church building. This gloom, despair, and agony on me person. I had that out here. I thought I could find hope in here. No, we're all dying. Okay. So you know what I mean? But then some of you have that personality. It's like you, you're drawn to people. You're a people person. I just wondered, do you know, if some of you, you I'm not setting you up. <laughs> you just know you're a people person. I do. I, I know that. Yeah, I see some of you. I just, I love people. And, and that, that's just my thing, right? You just know it. So that's, that's a little bit about the greeting. Now, now here's, here's what I want 
I want to encourage you with because remember, the helps ministry is all about rendering assistance and helping each other grow. So you're helping members grow and you're helping the ministries here at Harbor of Hope to grow and become healthy, right? Well, how are you helping people grow by being a greeter? You're helping people feel welcome. You're helping people. You're the first person somebody sees and you don't know what kind of week they had. And to see a smiling face, a welcoming face, to hear possibly even that Jesus loves them as they walk through the door, to hear that, you're, you're helping people feel better about life. So you're causing people to grow, amen? And to feel better about themselves by just seeing your face and to hear the good morning and everything is going to be all right because Jesus is alive, amen? He did rise from the dead. He is a living Savior. You're that first person that they, that they can see. You're helping people grow. And then you're helping the church become, the, the body of Christ become a healthy body, right? Because people are coming in feeling welcome. Amen? Amen. And then the nursery, you know, and that's, that's different, right? Some of us are not meant to be in the nursery, right? Some wives probably want their husbands to be in the nursery just to get a feel for that, right? But... Um, here, here's the thing about the nursery and our powerhouse ministries. We will require background checks because of the nature of our world today. Because there are predators who slide in under the cover of church and trust who try to slide into children's ministries and abuse children. If y'all didn't know that, I'm sorry to give you that information. But that is the world we live in. So we want to make sure that our children are as safe as possible. Amen? Now we have peacekeepers, all right, who, who are, are on duty every Sunday, and, and we want to make sure that, that we're as safe as possible. And again, I hate it that we have to do stuff like that, don't you? But that's the world that we live in, all right? So nursery, you would, you would be, you know, get there 20 minutes early, so we're looking at around 940, you know, and, 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 and pray and get ready for... Those, those children there that you're going to get to to pour into and love, right? Um, backgrounds check, check will be necessary. Uh, and then does this help and render assistance in any way to, to the nursery and, and, and to those children? And this is what's the beauty of, of the helping part. So this is the ministry of helps, and you're helping members grow, and you're helping the church, you know, become a healthy, growing church. But think about that. When, if your parents... And you know, you know how it is, you know, when you've got your children and you want to go to church and you want to grow as an adult in the Lord and you want to sit in the sanctuary, but you know, you know how kids are. <laughs> they don't understand what it means to be in a church service and not cry or not, you know, play around. But isn't it awesome to know that you've got somebody wanting to help you grow that will watch your children in the nursery? Ain't that awesome? So you see, you're helping another family grow by taking care of their child for a little spell so that they can come in and worship and, and grow in the Lord. Isn't that awesome? So, so that's, that's the beauty of the helps ministry. You come in to aid and render assistance, and you're helping. Not only are you growing because now you're able to, to be used by God because you're that nursery-type person. You want to help. You want to love on babies. You want to pour love into that child's life. But you're also helping those families grow in the Lord. It's beautiful. Same with the powerhouse ministry. So again, arrive around 20 minutes early, 940, and have some prayer. Uh, we do require background checks for that. Uh, so this is a situation where you help and render assistance in any way possible with the powerhouse ministry. Checking kids in. Uh, we're, we're looking at new ways to check our kids in to where the, we want to make sure that it is safe as possible. and We want our kids to be, to be safe. So you would be helping, render an assistance to, to Pastor Willa, our children's pastor, in any way you know you can, you can help her. But also, man, look what you're able to do. Here, here's kids that you can tell them Jesus loves them. Here's kids that you can interact with and you can love on. And if you see a child that maybe just needs prayer, man, you get to pray for children. And you don't know the impact you could have on a child's life. By them just coming to powerhouse ministries and seeing your face and you just pouring something positive into them and loving them. It could change their life forever. Now, the growing part. You remember the, the ministry of help helps. It helps members grow. It helps the ministries here be healthy and growing. Now, again, you're helping a family grow. 
because you're pouring into their children, you're loving them, you're assisting in any way possible to help them grow through Powerhouse Ministries. You're helping that child grow, and then you're helping the family grow because they get to come in the service and worship the Lord so you see how it works. And you're growing in that process too because I'm telling you, it's beautiful. When you step out of the comforts of, of, of just whatever, whatever that would mean to you, a comfort zone, and just say, God, here I am, use me. He'll start putting things on your heart to do and say to people to encourage and to love that maybe you've not been used to. So guess what? You're going to grow as well. It's beautiful. So we help each other grow, right? Then the worship team. So vocals, musicians, sound, multimedia. And aren't we thankful for our sound and multimedia? Can we give them a hand again? Because they're in the background back there. They're unnoticed. But man, they do such a great job. And without them, what would we do every, every Sunday, right? Again, the ministry of helps. What would we do without the people just coming in to aid and render assistance and help with what we do when we gather as the body of Christ? So here again, uh, now this is where it's a little different because the, the worship team, they meet earlier to, to get a quick rehearsal in just to make sure everything's on, on par and ready to go. And you wouldn't believe the things that can happen You would not believe the things that can happen from one Sunday to the next as far as sound. Things that you, we have no idea why it happens. Something will happen. There's a squeak here, a roar here. I mean, and we're just like, but we didn't touch anything all week. And you know what? That devil, he tries, don't he? He tries. You know what? All the problems we were having with our online services and stuff, it's just things that we didn't understand, and then we're smoothing all that out, and it's getting better and better. You see, it's... We work through that stuff. That's why we come together and learn how to work through things. Ain't that awesome? And so they come together early. It's gonna, you, on the worship team, you'll get here around 8.45 because there'll, there'll be about an, a 45-minute uh, rehearsal and you get ready for the day and you're getting you know, your heart set on the Lord. And then there's going to probably be a midweek practice at some point in time. So see, it's a little bit different, but what is it for? This is the growing part. You're growing. Because now you're utilizing, you're letting the Spirit of God work through you, to whether it's vocals, musician, you know, you're growing because the Spirit's working through you, flowing through you, and the giftings that He's placed in your life. But man, you get to, you get to lead the body of Christ into the presence of the Lord. Amen? Come on, but it's also dangerous. You remember the story in the Bible where they put the worship team in the front when they was going to go to battle? <laughs> you're up front, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're out front. But you know what? It's, it's beautiful. You get to help people grow in their worship by worshiping the Lord yourself. Isn't that awesome? So, so all these different ministries, it's all about helping one another grow. It's the ministry of helps when you come alongside to aid, just like that ship. We're on a journey. We're out to make disciples. We're out to build the kingdom of heaven, right? And we need these, these ministry of helps to come around and strengthen and, and help the ministries and help each other. And this is, what, this is what keeps us going forward in our purpose as Christians. This is what makes us strong and stable in our walk with Christ. Without the ministry of helps, what would, what, 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 where would we be? Right? I've always thought about having one Sunday where I just told Clayton, I told your whole team, y'all just stay seated that day, everybody, and just come up here by myself and try to do everything, right, no sound, hey, we ain't got no sound, we, 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 I, I don't know how to play instruments, but we're going to try to work this out, my point would be, what would we be as the body of Christ without others helping, it would be, it would be pitiful, wouldn't it? But when we all say, yeah, I've got that gift. Hey, I could do that. Hey, I could help in that area. Oh, man, yeah, this is going to be scary. And I've never done this, but I really think the Lord will lead me to help in this area. And we all come together and render assistance and we aid in these ministries. We become a healthy, growing church. Amen. So now, what are you going to do? Go ahead and get that bulletin out. Look at it. Be praying over it. Praying over it, praying over it, and, and, and next month, you know, we're going to have these same bulletins coming out, and, and it's just going to be repetitive, right? But I want, you to, I want you to get the point. We need you. I need you to help me grow. You need me to help you grow. We need each other. Amen?
And these members and the ministries that are here, that we are here at Harbor of Hope, we need the ministry of helps. Just people jumping in and helping. Amen. So if you want to sign up for something, we have the five-gallon buckets back out. Woo! That has on it ministry of helps. So you just fill that out, your name, phone number, email address, and put it in the ministry of helps bucket, and then we'll be contacting you at a later date. We'll get some database together to where we know who's wanting to do what. And, and it's just going to be great. I'm just looking at all your excitement right now. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yes, let's all stand. Let's all stand. Remember, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to, to come and, and talk to me about it. But we got a month. Pray about this. And um, I'm excited. I really am. I'm excited about what God's going to do in, in your lives. Yes. Okay, yeah, hey, there's a ministry that the guy's here today giving out T-shirts with Jesus on it. Come on. Free. They're free. So, hey, if y'all are interested, y'all check it out. Amen. I love that. It's got some good scripture on the back and stuff. So, uh, yeah, please check it out. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord, this is, we're in a season right now where we're rebuilding. Lord God, we're being restored. And um, this is exciting because I'm excited for what I know you're stirring in the hearts of your people. That's, that's, that's exciting to me. And um, I just know that even today as we go forward, Lord God, you're, you're, you're stirring. You're stirring somebody's heart. You're stirring a talent. You're stirring a gifting, Lord God. Or maybe you're just stirring someone's interest. Hey, I don't know what all this, these other what gifts I might have other than helps, but I can help. I can come in. And I can just, I can serve, and I can love, and I can, I can just help. Lord, that's what we need. That's what the body of Christ needs. And that, that ministry of helps is just as important as any other gifting that the Spirit works in and through us. So, Lord, I believe you're doing the work. And I believe, Lord God, we're going to see, Lord, some beautiful fruits uh, in this new season, fruits of growth. Lord, as we close, I don't know, I don't know what, what people have been through this week but I do know that God we're at this place where your presence is here and you're so sweet and awesome and maybe somebody just needs to come before the throne and just have special prayer today Lord so we want to make sure that we have that time maybe there's somebody here Lord God that does not know you as their savior Lord that they're running from you a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter but Lord Jesus you died for them Wages of sin is death, but you, di you died on the cross in their place. You, you paid the sin debt of death for them. You rose from the dead, Lord Jesus. And now I believe that, Lord, they're feeling you convict them and tug on their heart. They know they need you. They know they need to repent. They know they need to run into your loving arms. And I believe, Lord God, that as we give the time, Lord, that you'll, you'll draw people to you. We're lifting you up right now, Lord. So have your way. Church, if you just keep praying, I just wanted to open this altar in that, in that way. If you need special prayer, hey, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, we just want to give you this opportunity right now to come and make sure that you can leave here with the gift of eternal life. Amen. Let me sing a little bit and then we'll, we'll close after this. I just want to let the Lord move. Just let the Lord move. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Just worship him, church. Come on. Falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, it is the best thing I've ever in your arms I'm never disconnected 
And in your arms, God, I'm always protected. And in your arms, Jesus, that's where I want to be. And it's the best thing I've ever done. Yes, yes. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. It is the best thing I've ever It's the best thing I've ever done. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. You're the best thing I've ever done. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for allowing us to, to know you as our Savior. <laughs> You're amazing. You're everything to us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We magnify you. And, and Lord, I just pray a blessing now as, as the body of Christ. We, we, we leave this building to go back out into the ministry field, Lord God, of the workplace and our neighborhoods. And, and Lord, friends and relatives, associates, neighbors, the people, Lord, we can influence. And I pray that, Lord, you would anoint this body of believers to be the salt and the light that, God, you've called them to be. A people of purpose, a people of... Of, of disciple makers, Lord, and help them, Lord God, to love you with all their hearts, and minds, their strength, Lord God, and to love their neighbor as themselves, to reflect your amazing love. Lord, we love you. Thank you again for your presence today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, I love y'all. Hope y'all have a wonderful, blessed week. God bless you all.